down a pallet on your floor Make me down a pallet on your floor From the time I can remember, I loved music, be it Carson Robinson and the Buckaroos or uh, Gid Tanner and the Skillet Lickers. It was part of the uh, old-time music we had in the little wind-up phonograph. Uh, there was a cool collection of about 50 re recordings, old 78s, that came with it. Let it fall, let it rain a whole lot more cause I got them deep, the river blue. When the radio came in, I was already going to school at that time in the 30s when the radio came in our house. Early 30s, the Delmore brothers, the Carter family, gosh, all the people that would have been on the Grand Ole Opry at that time, Sam and Kirk McGee and Dave Macon, Roy Acuff, all those people. Uh, and then Merle Travis later on in the late 30s, early 40s. I waked up this morning at the break of day. Jimmy Rogers was one of the largest influences on me, the music he did, not his actual style. I used to try to deodle when I was a little boy and I could get all the way up to, I couldn't tell you what note. <laughs> I can't do that anymore. <laughs> I didn't develop it, it just happened. I heard fiddle tunes and tried to fiddle for, oh, 18 months, I guess, and I wasn't much better than a hungry pig on the thing. So, so I decided I'm gonna learn some fiddle tunes on the guitar, and I figured out that if you begin to pick up and down, even stroke, getting the notes coming up and down, you can get them a lot faster without working so hard. And the fiddle tunes, uh, I learned one or two, didn't do much with it until I heard Grady Martin uh, play guitar in Nashville on Sugarfoot Rag and Hank Garland and those boys. And I thought, hey, if they can play fiddle tunes that smooth, I believe I can learn one or two. So I worked at it. Treat me like a fool, treat me mean and cruel. Played on the street a, a lot back in the early days. Uh, kind of hard for a fellow that's visually handicapped to get on any kind of radio show. Even uh, by the time I got good enough to be on some of the local hillbilly shows and do the stage show part of it. Playing on the street, it was a, a strange but a rewarding business. I figured then I was selling something just like I will tonight when that folks buy tickets and come in here. I never felt ashamed of that. I've been asked by different people in interviews, Were you, are you ashamed that you played on the street? Well, Lord, no. Not. Uh, I did play on the street that summer and paid for an old uh, B-28 that I had for a long time. Uh, and played on the street for other reasons. I, after I was married for a while, I used to try to earn a, as some old boys used to say, a few pence, <laughs> uh, a few dollars to kind of help along with Rosalie with the children. We raised two children. That was when I got into a local dance band and we played some uh, rockabilly, as they want to call it now, and it was really early rock, light, you know, and a bunch of the old pop standards like, well, like Stardust and Basin Street Blues and Birth of the Blues, things like that, you know, that people could dance to. And that was what I did with the Les Paul in the 50s. No hot TV shows or hit records. Just enjoyed playing. Here is the St. James Hospital. Early one morning. I didn't understand how people would be that interested in the real genuine ethnic or old time music of the area. And I was skeptical about it, but I thought, oh, hey, I need some kind of uh, vocation to really earn a living for my family. I'm tired of charity or picking on the street. I'd like to do something and I love the music so good. And I said, well, uh, buddy, I'll try it. Well, I went to work and got back on a flat top guitar and began to work on the old timey songs. Way downtown, a fooling around. And to my surprise, and it was a little scary, I'd sit on the stage at a folk festival and play to 1,500 or 3,000 people. 
and you could hear a pin drop sometimes unless it was city noise. And man, it was a little scary to get used to that. You knew they were going to hear every mistake you made. <laughs> I loved everything in traditional American music, the ethnic music, if you will. All the ballads that, that express the joys and sorrows and the in-betweens of people's plight in life. That was the main thing I liked about the music, the lyrics and the melodies of that. It was just love of music. And that big old boy over there on the end is my son, Merle Watson. Let's make him welcome, too. interested in the guitar until I was on my first solo concert trip. My agent stopped by the house. And at that time, Ralph Rensler was doing the, the booking and helping me get started. And he called me and said, I've got a, a surprise for you. i got some news for you. I said, well, if it's bad, lay it on me anyway. And he kind of laughed. He said, Merle has started playing the guitar. Tell him about it now, son. time I got home, he could pick some fingerstyle things like Never on Sunday, and that was the 22nd of May when I got back. If I could have learned that fast, oh, Lord, I don't know what I would have given. But you know, you do what you can. If you love music, you're either uh, unbelievably talented or not. And if you love it good enough, you will learn it. Another thing that really was wonderful about working with Merle, he was so good at, at travel on the road as good as he was at learning music. He could memorize that blamed city in no time. He'd know how to go back there if it was a year later. And drove not hundreds of thousands, but oh, well over a million miles. I don't know how many miles that boy drove during the dues paying days. Just he and I together. Let's get one together, Maroon. I don't like the road and travel, but I love the music and I still do some of it for two reasons, because I love the music and I'd like to keep the savings short up enough till I don't have to spend all of them before. I don't know when, you know, a fellow don't know what'll happen. At my age, I'm 76 and I'm still playing a few jobs. Nothing like what I did, but I'm doing a few. And I'll, I'll keep on. Twas grace when I leave this world, these are my honest feelings. I'll be able to see like you can, only maybe more perfect. But blind, but now I see meant you're in darkness as far as high morals and caring about why he went to the cross for us. And I understand that, I see it in my heart and mind. And that's the exact value, the reason that that means so much to me. The hour I first Believe now, everybody sing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I
to the Folk Alliance, uh, I would like to say that I very, very much appreciate the award. Uh, I never really thought of uh, the music till here lately as a lifetime achievement, but it has been a, a bit of work. I was uh, 39 years old when I did my first professional trip in the music, so it's not quite a lifetime achievement. It's the, la the latter end of my life, you might say. But Lord, I appreciate it so much, folks, and thanks a million for recognizing me and for the award.